opportunity that you've given us, and we just pray that you give us spiritual strength, strength, wisdom, and guidance that we need to get through the day and any situation that comes our way. In your son Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen. amen. Thank you. I want to think about something.
important that we sing our own songs to the Lord, that we cultivate in our own mouths, in our own hearts, in our own minds, a song of praise. Just let's take a minute, let's adore the Lord tonight. Sing in the Spirit, if you want to sing in the Spirit, say the name of Jesus, but let's adore the Lord.
One's called to be the hand, one's called to be the arm, the leg, the foot, but we're all one body in Christ. There's a lot of different, there's, there's needs out there. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Amen. Um, yesterday we went out, me and Nick went out, and uh, there was a group of homeless guys on the bridge. It was like four of them. And uh, one of the guys that was there, he wouldn't even look at us last week. Like he had his hat pulled down real low. He wouldn't look at us in the face, tried to talk to him, tried to encourage him. And he walked, he walked away from us last week. Um, but it's something about consistency mm-hmm. when you're dealing with people. And that's kind of like the big picture with this community celebration that we're doing. We're, we're, making a big, we're making a long-term commitment because, honestly, a lot of those people in those communities, they don't really, you can invite them to church, but they're probably not going to come. So you have to take it to them. You know, and not just once a month or not like just once a quarter. Like, you've got to be out there all the time. And once they start to see that you are you love them and you truly care and you're concerned and you're out there, and it becomes more like a, a family-type uh, setting, community setting. They're going to start coming. They're going to start opening up. So, man, he started, he started engaging in the conversation and, we were talking, it turned out he knew Bobby and from the Valley Rescue, and uh, just kind of fell on some hard times. And uh, so we prayed with everybody and just hung out with them. We were hanging out, just sitting there, just chopping it up. And uh, so last week, you know, the dudes are hungry. It's hot out there. A lot of them don't feel like walking all the way up to get food to, to wherever it's at. You know, there's, there's different places you can go to in town, but if you got to walk, in a hundred degree heat, and you're already bummed out because you're homeless, and you got probably some other things going on, addiction or whatever, you really don't feel like doing it. To be honest with you, I mean, some of you guys have been homeless before, you know what I'm talking about. And so, uh, you know, last week I went and got food for everybody, and came back, and we fed them, and we hung out. And uh, yesterday I did the same thing. I was like, "Any of you guys hungry?" And the guy that wouldn't even open up last week. Man, next thing you know, he lit up like a Christmas tree. <laughs> you know, so I didn't just go get him food. I asked him what they wanted. And so they put an order in. So I went up um, and got what they asked for and came back and hung out with them while they ate. And the next thing you know, here comes six more people. Now we got ten people standing out there. And uh, we started having like a little church service right there on the bridge. You know, so I really believe that's what God's doing in this season, and that's what he's doing with the community celebration, is taking the church, because we are the church. The church isn't the four walls, that's just the building. We are the church. So we go to the people. We go to the people that aren't going to come, and we let them know that God loves them. And that was really the word, like the Father loves you. You know, no matter what you've done, no matter what you've been through, like the Father is madly in love with you, to a degree that he sent his son to die for you simplicity of the gospel you know and offering a meal and sitting there and hanging out and talking and um, every time we go out there you know we're developing relationships with these guys um, that one guy opened up there was another guy that came up he's like man I always miss the food like he got there late and we started talking and he had some situations going on and he ended up walking with me all the way back to my car and uh of course, I took him back over there to the restaurant, and I got him something to eat, too. And it turns out, when I started telling him about the Center of Hope, I think he's about 99.9% sure that he wants to get recovery. So, it, you know, it, it was a pretty big day, even though it was, just, it was just me and Nick. Nick works downtown, and I don't know if, I don't know if all y'all met Nick, but Nick helps with a lot of our IT stuff. And uh, he graduated from Columbus State. He's a worship leader at River Life up in Hamilton, but he loves Jesus, and uh, he goes out on his lunch break once a week, and does outreach on his lunch break, so I just meet him over there, so this is just an opportunity for this guy's on lunch, and goes out and, and making an impact, we've seen a lot of fruit, we've seen a couple people get recovery already, this guy looks like he's going to get recovery, um, of course with all of our resources, when you start talking to people and figure out what their problem is, uh, there's a lot of times we can make some phone calls and get people. We just got a guy in the Freedom House, and there's opportunities.
opportunity to get people off the street and help them. And even if it's just one person at a time, it's worth it, you know. Um, the Bible even talks about one, the one that comes to the Lord. It says all of heaven rejoices when one comes to the, turns to the Lord. So just want to encourage y'all with that, man. We don't have to wait till Monday night. We don't have to wait till Sunday. We don't have to wait till Wednesday night. Like, every day is an outreach. And I know we keep saying that. Every day is an outreach. Look for opportunities at work. The other, the other work crews, people that coming in, the plumbers, the whatever construction workers, whatever. Um, when you go to lunch, look for opportunities at the restaurants, or uh, it might even be your brother. Your brother might be going through something. You know, be a listening ear for your brother. Pray with your brother. But there's so many opportunities every day. Amen. To be the hands and feet of Jesus. Now, this video it said power and love. In lifestyle Christianity, for y'all that don't know, lifestyle Christianity was a ministry that was started by Todd White. And Todd White was an atheist. Nobody witnessed to him for 30 years of his life. Nobody told him about Jesus. And he was kind of a scary looking guy. You know, he had dreadlocks. And he was, before Jesus, he was like a, one of those uh, heavy metal, death metal, like lead vocalists. So he was just like, very intimidating so he probably wasn't very welcoming to most people but those seem to be the people that we're drawn to the most you know the people that aren't welcoming to others we that, we seem to gravitate towards that we seem to want that <coughs> anyway Ty White was on the verge of committing suicide like went to his going to the gun cabinet to literally get a gun and take his life and there was a phone book right by the gun cabinet and he opened it up and he turned to a church, and he's like, you know, what do I got to lose? You know, so he went to this church, knocked on the door, and Dan Moeller, this guy that we're going to go see this weekend, he's going to be in Valley Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It was Dan Moeller's church. So Dan Moeller ended up leading Ty White to the Lord. Of course, he didn't commit suicide. He took him under his wing. He discipled him. Um, he kind of just went with him to minister for like a year, I think, maybe longer. And uh, now he's got an international ministry that's impacting the world. He's got a Christian university, LCU, Lifestyle Christianity University. This is a man that was an atheist that was on the way to take his life. And now he's got a university that's training people up and sending them out all over the world to preach Jesus. So this guy, Dan Moeller, is his spiritual father, the one that actually led him to the Lord, is going to be the one that's going to be in Valley this weekend. So I want to encourage y'all to go, man. It's, he has a heart for people that's in recovery or those type folks, and he could go anywhere in the world, and that's where he chooses to go, is to minister to folks that's come out of with similar backgrounds that we have. The broken you know, he goes to women's facilities, men's, men's facilities. He gets over 400 invites a year to come and speak. So you don't want to miss it. Josh is, I think Josh, are y'all bringing the van? I know Josh is bringing the van. Yep. Uh, anybody that wants to go get with Josh or Ryan or any of the guys that's going. And uh, I know Shane said he, he would like to tag along. Whoever wants to go, man, I want to encourage y'all. Come out, man. You will, You won't regret it. It's going to be awesome. Amen? Amen? It's just cool to me to see somebody that was that far gone that the Lord is using in such a mighty way. And God's not a respecter of persons, right? Right. If He did it for Him, He'll do it for us. Amen? Um, there was a verse this morning... Proverbs that I read. Proverbs twenty nine. Proverbs twenty nine twenty five. It says the fear of man brings a snare. But whoever trusts in the Lord shall be saved. In the in the Hebrew
Hebrew, that word safe, it means secure or set on high. The fear of man brings a snare, Proverbs 29, 25. But whoever trusts in the Lord shall be secure and set on high. What does that mean to y'all? I'm going to tell you, for me, when I, when I remember the first time I got asked to share, one of the things that plagued me back then was the fear of man. Like, I remember looking out at the audience, and it was so intimidating, like seeing all the faces. And y'all know what I'm talking about? <laughs> seeing all the faces, and you're like wondering, like, what are they thinking? You almost feel like people are judging you for what you're saying. You know, you feel like you're going to say something wrong. You know, or, or it's just so many different things that were racing my mind back then. And I remember... I remember one time, the first time I got asked to speak, I didn't even show up. <laughs> I was so scared. I didn't even go. I really didn't. <laughs> the next, one, one of the other times, I was like trying to get a word from the Lord, and it was like the Lord boxed me out, and I couldn't hear anything. And I sat at the table all day long trying to prepare this message, and I just was not getting anything. And that night, I remember I had knots in my stomach. He's like, man, what am I going to say? Because it was like, you know, 40 guys in prison, 40, 50 guys in the main sanctuary, the main service. And a lot of these guys are like theologians. They've been in the Word, you know, for 20 years. And you're like, man, what am I going to say? And I remember uh, the Lord just kept telling me, trust me. Trust me, trust me. And I was like, all right. So I feel like that was like a breaking point for me where I remember getting up there and I literally, once I opened the scripture, I was there was still a fear there until I opened the scripture. The Lord, I got up there, didn't even have a verse, didn't even know where I was going, and the Lord told me to go to Psalm 23. And as I started reading Psalm 23, the shepherd song, it was like that fear of man broke off of me. And from that day forward, I remember just growing and putting more and more confidence in the Lord. And it's really a safe place. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But as long as we put our trust in man, our fear in man, whether that man be someone else or ourself, that could be a trap. But when I shift my confidence from man to putting my confidence in the Lord, that brings me into a place of safety place of trust and ever since then it was still a progression it got better and better easier and easier but you can't be conscious of man you can't be man conscious and God conscious at the same time does that make sense mm -hmm. so when it comes to what God's doing in this season where he wants to We've been talking about this end time harvest where Jesus gave his blood and the Father asked him what he wanted and he says, I want the nations for inheritance. Well, guess what? Guess how he's doing that today? He's doing that for you, James. For you, Troy, Vern, Josh, Tyler, David. He's possessing the world, the, the, the nations through us. And if we have a fear of man, we're never going to step out. We'll never step out. And I'll tell you this from my experience. The guys that are, it seems like the guys that are most afraid to step out, they're usually the ones that don't want to leave once they do step out. Or once they start doing it, it's so much fun. It's like, wow, man, I can't believe I was letting, allowing fear to keep me shut, you know, shut up and not moving forward, just in bondage. I was allowing fear to keep me in bondage and my mouth shut for so long, you know, um, it just really blew me away. But once I began to put my trust in the Lord, that fear broke off. You know, it says God's perfect love cast out every fear. And it, it's, it's good. The rest was history. So 
in this season, the Lord is wanting us just to begin, even even stepping out in the gifts. We've been talking about, you know, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, gift of faith, gifts of healing, uh, and all these different things that God wants to do. Prophecy, all these different things that God wants to be, do through us. Um, you know, He's just wanting us to have that trust. You know, it says we were talking about this yesterday, me and a friend, about. The scripture that says, in order to come into the kingdom, you must first become like a little child. What are some attributes of a child? A child, a child trusts, right? A child trusts his parent, his, his, his father or his mother. There's a trust there, right? Right, Junior? Yep, you trust your daddy? There's a, there's a faith there. There's a faith that whatever they say they're going to do, they're going to do it. Obedience. Obedience, yeah. Yeah, Jesus says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So if there's a, that love there for that father, we're going to want to, you know, we're going to want to do, not have, necessarily have to do, but we're going to want to do the things that he asked us to do. You know, so there's a trust. There's faith. There's obedience. What else? As a child, fearless. No fear. That's right. Zero fear. And as we begin in this season, as we begin to step outside of that fear, God's going to begin to use us in a mighty way. What else? Anything else jump out to you guys from that verse? about stepping out from the fear of man and trusting the Lord anything else I like uh, I think about some of the places that we've gone to to do outreach um, even places that I've taken my children to in the past and like the night before, there was like a, a you know a shootout in that same area, you know. And I think about how how many times the Lord has just had His hand upon us, you know. And as we trust Him going into this next season, when we're going into some of these places, like that, even that East Highland area over there where Love and Kindness is, they've had a lot of shootings and stuff like that over there. But I don't ever think about that when I go walking through there. Do you guys? And that's what the Lord is really wanting us to do, continue to do, is just have that no fear, that trust, that faith, that obedience, that love. And I'm telling you, like, we are about to, we're about to see a harvest like we've never seen. And doors are about to start opening up. More doors are about to start opening up. Our, our, I've been looking at this guy called Mario, named Mario Murillo. He's ministering right now. Um, they're seeing entire college campuses come to the Lord. I'm talking about rush the altar. Like you don't hear about stuff like this in the normal news, do you? It's like America's going to hell in a handbag. That's all you hear, right? I don't really watch the news, but I hear people talking about it in passing. Um, they're seeing college campuses come to the Lord. Recently, they were in Atlanta on July 4th weekend, and they had probably about 200 people come to the altar that night and make a commitment to follow Christ. And we see that, like I've studied God's generals before, like Catherine Kuhlman, you see like Billy Graham, and these folks would minister, and I'm talking about the whole arena would come to the Lord. We're about to start seeing that again. And I don't think we're just going to start seeing it. I think, I believe we're going to start being involved in it. Where we're going to be ministering the simple gospel and we're going to see people coming to the Lord. In the <laughs> Isn't that exciting? Yeah. And I just want to encourage you, Vern, your, the vision that the Lord's given you, don't be intimidated by it. And I know you're not. But don't be intimidated by it. And don't be concerned that it's not going to happen. It's going to happen. As long as you keep moving in that direction, he's going to make it happen. And whatever that vision is, 
the Lord's given you, Ryan, about traveling and being a missionary, you know, and, and visiting these different remote places, don't give up on that vision. Just continue to seek first the kingdom. And I'm telling you, I believe a lot of us are still in a season of preparation. Because we don't want to go into any of these places half-baked, if you know what I mean. You know, we want to be fully prepared. And some of you guys, I've talked to some of you guys, and some of you guys have felt the weight already of just going in and doing what we're doing. There's a weight. There's a weight when you start going in. I've heard about I've heard about ministers going into India, and the weight's so heavy. There's so much darkness over there that they struggle even getting off the plane. There's a weight when it starts coming to uh, really going into some of these dark places and pulling people out of darkness, pulling people out of the mouth of the enemy and pulling them into God's kingdom. But God's, God is preparing us. He's building us. He says he builds us on revelation, understanding who he is and who we are in him. Right? So when the time comes, there's going to be zero fear. We're going to know how to hear his voice, and we're going to know how to really flow with his voice. And that's what we've been learning, learning how to flow with the voice of the Father. And when we do that, when we flow with the voice of the Father, all of heaven has our back. When we do exactly what he tells us to do, when we say exactly what he tells us to say, God's words don't return void. They just don't. You know, when Jesus, when he operated and did and said what he heard the Father say and do, it said he was given an anointing without measure. And we're going to see that in this next season. Amen? Anybody got anything? Anything on your heart to speak this morning? James, you got something? That if anything, if the Lord's put anything on your heart this morning, um, you're welcome to share it. So, when it comes to when it comes to worship, guys, when it comes to outreach. When it comes to being the hands and feet of Jesus every day, I was thinking about this during worship this morning, how there's so many different thoughts that come every day, and a lot of times, even in church, right, even in worship, these thoughts come maybe about ourselves. A judgment about ourselves, not from ourselves, but like maybe something the enemy's saying, like, you know, you're not worthy, or you're not good enough, or you're not able. All these different things that come in. Or it might be a judgment about somebody else. I don't like the way he worships. I don't like the way he looked at me this morning. Or I don't like the way he dresses. I don't like the way he flows. Y'all know what I'm talking about. See, the enemy's constantly wanting to bring, he's wanting us to judge. Because look, it says if we judge others, what happens? The same measure that we judge will be measured back to us. And the enemy's trying to put judgment on us. So one of the things, and I know I've talked about this a couple times in the last couple weeks, one of the things that I've been working on, guys, as we as we get ready to take communion, 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5, says that we've got to cast down every thought and every imagination that exalts itself above the Word. 
So if it's an imagination or a thought about myself that's contrary to the word, then I've got to cast it down. It's because that'll create a stronghold. That'll keep me in a place of bondage. The fear of man is a trap. Fear in general is a trap. Now, if a judgment comes about someone else that's outside of the word, an imagination or a thought about my brother, blast it down. Blast it down immediately. And replace it with what? Love. Love. Love sees the best, hopes the best, believes the best in every person. We don't honor people based upon what they're doing. We based upon we we honor people based upon who they are in Christ and the price that was made paid and, and done by the finished works of the cross. That's why we honor people. Um, I, I, I'm actually getting this uh, line from a song that says that like, we, we want to see the nations brought to Christ or we want to see the nations saved but when it comes to our own city would we even cross the street? Um, and like this outreach is crossing the street, you know. I really encourage y'all to, to take part in that because uh, it is the missions field. Uh, it is going out and, and making disciples, uh, just like the you know the Great Commission says. And um, I know we all work eight or ten hours a day in. 100 plus degree weather and we're all tired and worn out at the end of the day but um, uh, 1 Peter 4 11 says uh, those who speak should speak as though they're speaking the, or the utterances of God and those who serve should serve as though it is God who gives them the strength and he will give you the strength he'll give you the endurance you'll you'll be energized when you go out and, and do stuff like that. Amen. Don't let being tired be an excuse. Because um, I, I haven't been tired at, at a single one, and I work out in the direct sunlight or in a solar oven out there all day. And every other day of the week, I'm exhausted and go take a shower and go to bed. But on Mondays, I go out and do four or five hours of outreach. So uh, try it out. And I think it starts in our own backyard first. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people, I remember the Lord spoke that to me one day driving over here um, because a friend of mine, a uh, close friend of mine, Brother Howard, the one that led the Young Theologian Group, um, they were about to do a missions trip to India. In this specific ministry, they seen like two million, lots of two million people come to Jesus through this ministry. And they were going in, what they were doing is they were going in and they were training pastors and they would set up like a dozen churches. They would come in, set up like a dozen churches, get pastors in position, and then they would leave. And I was like, man, that sounds like a lot of fun. And then COVID hit. I was planning on, I was talking about maybe going and uh, Josh had already approved it and everything. And as I was coming to work one day, the Lord was like, man, you're wanting to go overseas and you got all these people down Highway 80, 280, Highland area that are hurting. The mission field is right here. <laughs> like, and I feel like as we're faithful in this garden that he's given us, just like with Adam, he intended on, he wasn't going to keep Adam in that confined garden. As Adam was faithful in tending and cultivating that specific location that he gave him, the boundaries was going to extend and expand to cover the earth. And that's what he's doing with us right now with these different outreaches. He's saying, I want to see if you guys are going to be faithful with this, and then I'm going to begin to expand, and I'm going to begin to possess the earth through you, my hands and feet. Isn't that exciting? Man, that's exciting. Like, this is the seed form of something big. The seed form. And all those that say, 
whoa, man, I see what the Lord's doing, and, and they want to get involved and, and step into this, there's going to be there's going to be a huge payoff of that. And I know that ain't why we do it. But for me, it's exciting to see people come to Jesus. And the more of an impact we can make, you know, the more that God's blessed and the more that I'm blessed. Because I, when God's blessed, I'm blessed. Amen. Amen. So, just in case Josh is watching, I guess we need to go ahead and do this. Cause I don't want to get in trouble. All right. So, one of the things, you know, just as we partake of this, let's make a covenant. Because this is just like a remembrance of the covenant that we have with Jesus. Let's make a covenant. Let's try to make a covenant through God's grace with our mind in our heart let's, let's say Lord help me to cast down those thoughts about myself that don't line up and help me to replace it with what you're saying about me and let's also make a covenant and say Father I don't want to judge people no more I want to love people help me to cast down those judgments quickly instead of meditating on them instead of meditating on the lies and the judgments of the enemy help me to meditate on what your word says about these individuals and how much you love these individuals. And I'm telling you, your life will be radically changed. Your life will be radically changed. Love, we were, we were designed by love to love. We've been wired to love. It's been proven. I've seen it from neuroscience. Science always lines up with the word. It really does. So neuroscience has proven that when you love, I've seen the, the wiring that's inside of our body, it looks like a perfect tree when we love. When we don't love, it looks like a black cloud inside. And it really, it's that weight. Y'all ever felt that when you get aggravated with somebody or it's just like a weight? You don't really have clarity in your mind. You can't really see straight function. That's because we weren't designed, we weren't designed to carry that. We were designed to love. Amen? Mm -hmm. So let's, I want to work on that. I notice I said let's work on, when we have that judgment come, let's cast that judgment down and, and replace it with something positive. Replace it with a, lo with a, with a, with a love thought. Amen? Mm -hmm. Whether it's about us or someone else. And watch the world around you start, start to change and get brighter and better. All right. Father, we thank you for sending your son Jesus that he came, he died, and he rose on the third day. Leading up to the cross, it says that he received those lashes for us. And the word of God says in Isaiah 53 that by his stripes we're healed. In 1 Peter 2, it says that by his stripes we were healed. So, Father, we thank you for healing, um, not just in our physical bodies and in our emotions, but also in our uh, relationships with one another. Father, I pray that if there's been any kind of disagreements or any alts, Lord, right now, that we would lay them on the altar. Father, we let go of those those wrongs and we say thank you for your body that brings healing in relationships. And today we say thank you for your thank you for your body. grateful for your blood that was shed for the remission of sins. We thank you for not just dealing with sin, but you dealt with the sin consciousness. Lord, I pray that we would become more righteous consciousness, not based upon anything we've done other than have faith in what you did. Lord, help us to come boldly before your throne of grace in time of need, Lord, so that we can represent you well. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for your life. Thank you for everything that you did on the cross. In Jesus' name. All right. Dan Moeller, tonight at 7, tomorrow night at 7, and Sunday morning. Get with Josh Meyer, get with Ryan, get with some of the other guys that are going. We'll see y'all there. Yeah, I'm not going to make it tonight.